brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that supports life and family. 5% of your monthly plan price goes to your favorite charity. Buy the way you believe at CharityMobile.com and use promo code TRADITION. I just reported to you a few days ago about the Catholic Church across the United States being the target of men pretending to be priests who use their influence to gain access to parts of parishes that most people don't have access to so that they can then steal from the parishes. There have been different suspects in different places, some of them caught, some of them being sought after by law enforcement. This is part of a larger trend we're seeing now of Catholic churches across the Western world being the target of, well, nothing short of, can be described it, but as anything other than hate and being the target of all sorts of wickedness. Today I have two stories for you, one that hits very close to home for me, actually. When I first heard this story, before even reading the article that I'm going to present to you, I had a feeling I knew where this, where this was taking place, and I was right. So this one hits particularly close to home for me. First, let's turn to Gloria TV for the... Uh, for an example outside the United States with this headline. France, 1-0 to zero for Our Lady. This story involves activists trying to get religious statues removed from across France. And this one being a very particular battle involving a statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And it looked like they were going to win until some faithful Catholics stood up and found a workaround. And this was meant to be a bit of a palate cleanser before we get to the main story. So we go to Gloria TV, who tells us this, quote, In 1945, a family in La Flotte Andre, a French tourist resort on the Atlantic coast, erected a statue of Our Lady after their father and son returned safe from the Second World War. The statue was first placed in a private garden. In 1983, it was given to the town council and placed in its current location. In 2020, the statue was destroyed by a driver, but the municipality restored it, meaning there was a car accident that destroyed the statue. Then a group of church haters calling themselves La Libre Pense, or Free Thought, sued the city, citing an outdated 1905 law that bans religious emblems in public places. No free thought. The Administrative Court of Poitiers, France, ordered that the de demolition of the beautiful statue in the name of secularism. The term secularism is a euphemism for hating religion. The church haters fought for three years to have Our Lady removed. When they won, they lost. Last Friday, the statue was reinstalled just a few steps from its previous pedestal. This time, it is no longer in public space, but on private land. End quote. In other words, some private property owner volunteered to have the statue placed on their property, where it can be seen very publicly. I There's no details there, so I don't know if they will allow people to visit the statue. My suspicion is they will, even if it is on private property. That is a victory for the faith in France. A small one, but we'll take them wherever we can get them. Perhaps with the, uh, chain, the winds of change blowing in France in the direction that they appear to be, we'll get more of these, and those who have real animosity towards the Catholic Church will finally be put in their place, but we shall see. But here's the story that hit close to home. In Portland, Oregon, a historic parish was entered into illegally, and a tabernacle and host, a tabernacle full of hosts were taken. There's a reward out for it. Headline from LifeSite News. Priest offers cash reward for a tabernacle stolen from Catholic Church in Portland. In yet another act of vandalism at a church, a thief took a tabernacle that contained the host from St. Michael's Parish. This story is particularly close to home for me. I know that parish very well. It's St. Michael the Archangel Parish, located basically on the campus of my alma mater, Portland State University, where I got my undergraduate degree, my master's degree, my PhD in political science and related fields. I know that parish very, very well. I have a lot of fond memories of that parish. Yes, despite it being a Novus Ordo parish, for those of you who can't believe that, I would say anything nice about that. I know that parish very well. Wasn't particularly pleased when it was renovated and uh, painted inside in a very gaudy kind of way, thus kind of destroying much of its, its internal 
historic aesthetics, but it was it was home for a long time. And this parish is on the is on the National Historic Registry. It's the National Italian Parish in Portland. It's not the only one that something like this has happened to. But this parish had its tabernacle full of hosts taken, as well as some other mundane items. From the article, quote, A Catholic priest is hoping that a cash reward will provide the incentive for a thief to return a gold-painted tabernacle that contains the Blessed Sacrament. Father Ignacio Laurent of St. Michael the Archangel Parish in Portland, Oregon, told CBS affiliate Coin6 that security camera footage caught a burglar breaking into the church after midnight earlier this month. They climbed through the stairs to the bell tower, and then he entered the kind of office area, Laurent said. At 4 a.m., he entered our chapel and took what in the Catholic faith is called a tabernacle. Video of the robbery suggests the man was African American and that he stole it perhaps thinking it was pure gold. I don't care for the bike or the speaker or the other things that were stolen, but yes, to recover the tabernacle and most precisely, the blessed host that is inside the tabernacle, Laurent remarked. St. Michael's has been posting flyers around the area with a $1,000 reward for the return of the tabernacle and consecrated host inside. Coin 6 says police made an arrest, but the suspect was released. End quote. Again, St. Michael's is the national Italian parish in Portland, Oregon. There's still a fair number of Italian families who were going to mass there the last time I was there a decade ago at this point. But the it's mostly uh, college students and people who travel from across the area to go to that parish for their own reasons. And daily, it offers daily mass in the downtown area. So a lot of business office workers and service workers would go to daily mass there. Now, this is a little hard to believe that this happened in a way if you have like a if you view the city of Portland through rose tinted glasses because the city of Portland in the last few years since I left it became a, sort of a hotbed for crime all sorts of just really horrible things have happened there part because the city of Portland the state of Oregon and the local DA all started uh, enacting utopian policies about how to deal with crime and this is the result of that it's one of the reasons I won't move back to Portland and I won't move back to Oregon because the city and the state are run by people who don't have a firm grasp on reality, and they tend to put the uh, use the force of law against good people and to restrict the lives and actions of good people, as opposed to dealing with their very basic governing problems. And for whatever reason, the people of that state and that city just go along with it and keep putting the same people back in office every time they get an opportunity to change something at the ballot box. That's what happens. This isn't the only place in Portland this has happened at either. Portland, Oregon, as I said, you probably can guess the ideology that dominates in that city. There there is a real animosity to the faith there. And part of it is because it was one of the places where the Ted McCarrick problem was pretty pronounced back in the 90s and early 2000s. But a couple of years ago when the U.S. Supreme Court overturned the big law passed in 1973 defending the Moloch ritual. The protests that exploded across the country in response to that targeted Catholic churches, and there was one in Portland that was targeted. Recently, in the same city, St. Patrick's Catholic Church, which was another parish I was very familiar with, actually it's where I met my wife, initially, she, it was at, it's in the different part of town, but a walking distance by Portland standards from the university, they were targeted by those people who were uh, very angry that uh, Moloch got a black eye that day in the legal system. And they spray-painted their slogans to de- detailing how they had the right to offer living sacrifices to their dark god, which was the, which is the person they see in the mirror every day. They sprayed their slogans all over that building. And this is part of a larger trend we're seeing across the United States. There are these acts happening to Catholic churches. We need to be aware of them. There were there used to be talk, by the way, when this stuff was at its peak a couple of years ago, of the men of parishes basically keeping an around-the-clock watch on their parish buildings. We had this at my parish. It, the parish that I go to in Oklahoma was having this conversation privately among the men there. I don't know if this conversation was being had in Portland. I don't know how the local authorities would have taken to Catholic men just being visible 
at the parish in the middle of the night walk, keeping an eye on things. But that was happening, and it's part of a larger trend. So, from the article, quote, CatholicVote.org reported that there had been over 400 attacks on Catholic churches in the U.S. since 2020, and that St. Patrick's was the 252nd since May 2022. Catholic Vote's violence tracker states that 27 attacks have occurred in 2024 alone, and that of only 25% of cases end in arrest. The website also found that the top 10 states with the most attacks on Catholic churches are California with 55, New York with 46, Pennsylvania with 25, Texas with 22, Colorado with 17, New Jersey with 17, Ohio with 16, Florida with 16, Massachusetts with 16, and Oregon with 15. And quote. You may notice a sort of common thread among the ideologies dominant in all those states except Texas. I've, I've reported in the past on some of these um, statues of Our Lady that had that were destroyed, basically. Um, Usually with the hallmarks of this being done by Protestants, so who knows where they were on the political spectrum on this, but oftentimes this had to do with that big court case and people's perceived access to the Moloch ritual, as I have to call it on this platform. That's what this is usually about, but sometimes this is done by Protestants who um, have lost basic common sense and don't understand that uh, the legal system will not take them very kindly because, well... What do you expect is going to happen when you do these kinds of things to a Catholic church, especially in the modern day where the, it seems like the authorities look for any reason to tighten their grip on churches in general and believers and make examples of them. I'm curious, what do you think about this story? Um, let me know in the comments, especially if you're in or Portland or familiar with Portland. Have you, what have you heard on the ground level if you're in Portland or have relatives who maybe go to that parish or are in Portland and if they're talking about this story? I'm curious what you have to say about this. Let me know in the comments, please, and hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.